honored Peltier in a ceremony inside the prison. Some of you don't know who Peltier is. He's is one of our political prisoners that's accused of killing two FBI agents. But that's where it stands, this accusation. He's been in there eight years fighting. You know. And <clears throat> the FBI is... One of the things is we bring that word out, FBI, we should just say federal government. You know. The federal government, uh, whether you're in the army or any part of the federal government, you're expendable. You know. So it doesn't matter. If you get kid killed, you can be replaced. That's the attitude that you have when you're in the army or in the navy or marines or it doesn't matter what branch of service. <coughs> and in this case, there was two FBI agents that were killed and they didn't have they didn't have the the guilty party so because of uh, two casings, rifle casings, out of, um, they, they found 5,000 rifle casings and they picked two of them at random. And those two of them that were picked out happened to be Leonard Peltier's. But the bullets that was found inside of the two FBI agents, the rifling did not match the casings of the, of the bullet. So that's where uh, the appeal for a new trial began in Bismarck, North Dakota. Suppressed evidence of 5,000 copies, 5,000 papers that were uh, suppressed by the FBI had to be released. 2,000 were released. And the moment that they were released, they found that there were three other figures involved in forgering the um, ballistic expert's name because the ballistic expert says that's not my name and that's not what I have found and then the second party came in again you know so it was like opening up a, a can of worms so to speak you know? so there are we know for a fact that there are four parties involved in the frame up of the whole thing and there's going to be three judges to try this and once it comes to trial quite a few of the FBI. It'll be, uh, when it comes to trial, it'll be worse than the Watergate. And that's what's coming down. You know, so far we have about four million signatures, you know, for the release of Peltier. So we have quite a few signatures. <coughs> we have 62 senators at this time fighting to free Leonard on his own recognizance while the trial begins, yes. You know when the trial is going to begin? Sometimes, um, they have a hearing sometimes in February. We don't know what day it is, you know. Uh, right now, uh, Leonard, uh, I had a hard time going into prison. I was supposed to go in last week. I think it was on a Wednesday, I was supposed to, Tuesday I was supposed to go in. And they changed their mind, so I couldn't go. And they said I couldn't go in, so I had to cancel my reservation. In the meantime, I was on my way to, <laughs> I already paid for my airline flight and I canceled it. Two days later, they said it was okay, so I remade the reservation, you know, and everything. And 12 hours before I was supposed to fly, they canceled it again, you know. This is what they were doing to me at the prison. They said I could, then they, the, the, the warden says yes. And then the chaplain will say no, because nobody didn't know what was going on. So this following Monday, I picked up the telephone call, and the telephone call the warden myself. I said, either it's yes or no. I said, we got three lawyers in between us. You know, your lawyer, my lawyer, and the chaplain. He said, they're all in between. So who's right? He said, well, I'm the warden. He said, I said, okay, that was last week. So why didn't you come? So I said, <laughs> so we had to get the lawyers involved again, you know, so they said, okay, so it is, you know, it was an oversight on our part. So in the process of this, the only good thing that came out of it, the first time I paid a reservation of $730 round trip TWA, and 
two days later, uh, they dropped it down a hundred dollars. It was six hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> well, when I left um, early Tuesday morning, when I went to the airport, they refunded me everything. You know, all the money, and, and they said the, the round trip only cost three hundred dollars. I made some money off of my own money, so anyway, I paid off. I paid seven hundred thirty in the beginning, you know, and they didn't give me a chance to get a refund. They gave me some of it back. But on behalf of Paltier and what is going on, we know the man is innocent. You know, you can't go inside of a prison. You know, and he's he's on a lockdown right now. With them. He went uh, 48 days without food and water. You know. Now he's on food right now. There was three of them. But the warden went there two hours before I did and told him that we filed a lawsuit against the prison for denial of religion, you know, for the Indians in there in that prison. And the warden threatened the three of them that were transferred from Marion, which is one of the highest detention prisons. He, he told them that uh, if you file this lawsuit, I will send you back to Marion. But Leonard inside says, go ahead and file it. We can't do anything worse than that, so we file the lawsuit. So it's kind of hard when you, when you can't, one of the things, the teachings that we have is the, the politics is the highest form of spirituality, depending on whose politics, I guess, you know, this, and if you see who the politicians are, you know, today, then you wonder, you know, it's obvious that this saying affects my people, you know, in the teachings. So we believe in law and we believe in justice, but justice for the American Indian is one-sided. It is not two-sided like everybody. It's not justice. It's not laws, man-made laws, as far as I know, are made to be broken. <clears throat> laws made of spiritual laws, and physical laws of love and understandings cannot be broken. Those are understandings that we have as medicine people. <clears throat> so we are confronted with a, a monster with many heads in this justice system that we are confronting right now. So the lawyers are, we are getting some lawyers that had training in uh, in India from the Sufi teachers. We're getting some lawyers from there and we're bringing a lawsuit called Spiritual Abuse mm -hmm. against the United States government. And we're asking for five billion dollars now because the numbers and money is the game of the American government. Uh, and if that's the way they want to do it, that's, you know, and most likely the way it is, it's set up, we will probably win, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all, you know, because the way everything is so funny in the government. Yes? What prison is Leonard in now? I thought he was in Marion. Who? What prison is he in now? He's in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, he's been in there for a while, eight months now. <clears throat> and it's really a sickening prison, you know. It's it's like a dungeon of a place. It's worse than uh, paddocks, you know, where they keep horses, you know, uh, unkept stalls or something like that, you know. The... The doors are all, all iron, except a hole in the door, about four inch by six inch, to peek out. And it's a bulletproof glass. And on the bottom is probably about ten inch by a thin slit where the trays go in for their food. 
You know, and that's all. Isn't there? There's a bed um, and a toilet, and that's it. And that's where they're kept. And some of these guys are uh, mental cases. You have to understand that in the United States government, there is still such thing as uh, frontal lobotomy. That still goes on. You know, it's something that has been going on for quite a while, an experiment with people within the prisons to take the violent part of the brain out. And once they do that, that person is no good to anyone. He's completely lost. He can't get him to do anything other than he's sitting around looking like a human, that's all. <clears throat> I know quite a few of those guys now that they have did this to. <clears throat> These are some of the things that we're trying to expose, you know, and, and it's very hard, you know, and when it affects your people, you know, and this prison system in the experimental stages, not only as the Indians, you know, in, in the areas of Springfield, you know, they have all nationalities in there. You see people there in their 70s, you know, some of them even in their 80s walking around like zombies in there, you know, as their inmates. You wonder how long they've been there, you know. But they don't talk, they just walk around. It's like zombies. Some of them got them on high uppers or downers. And then these people just walk around as they're experimenting with the pills inside the prison. And to walk in there is, you, you never want to get a prisoner behind your back because you never know what's going to happen, you know. No matter who it is. And you get that feeling, you know. I walked around with the chaplain, the Catholic chaplain. I said, I wouldn't stand to work here for one week. Because the feeling that's going on, you know, if a person's a human, you know, Every other door says doctor so and so, psychiatrist, you know, psychologist, or therapist. That's all it has in the whole place. And you wonder where you get them, you know. But it's easy to become a therapist. You can become a prison guard and become a therapist. But they teach you that inside the prisons. Know, and that's how they get their degrees, some of them. <clears throat> One of the guys is on his back, called Standing Deer. He can't even get up, but they don't want to do nothing to him. Unless he signs papers, you know, that he will drop the charges of don't file suit against the government. It wouldn't, it wouldn't help him at all. He's got spine problem. He's on his back. He can't move. But he's still fighting. He's one of the guys who's been on a diet also, on a fast. And he's still fighting. He said they make a lot of tempting offers. He said, turn me loose. He said, they sending me back to Marion. They're sending him back to Marion. <clears throat> I used to think that, you know, American government, when I was young, that the United States government, you know, we had the best of everything. Then I'm finding out that... <laughs> It doesn't work that way. You can get lost in a prison, no matter who you are. Completely lost from one prison to the other. And the way they can treat you, the way they can do things to you. But yet, Leonard prayed with us, you know. He prayed with me anyway. I was by, him, by myself with him inside the cell. I was able to go in the cell and pray with him. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
and play with the pipe. So very comforting. But yet, through eight years of oppress of an innocent man like this, and still able to cry and pray for the people on the outside. So how can a person pray for the people on the outside? You know, he even prays for the guards that keep him in there. And the judge who's, who did all this. <clears throat> you have to have some kind of strength to pray for the people that oppress you. <clears throat> I felt that each and every one of us can be in that same position very easily. When I walked that when I walked out of that prison, each time I walk out of that prison, I make a vow to myself. But my work inside these prisons will continue until I see all these fences fall down, and walls fall down. <clears throat> I believe in in punishment to a certain degree, but I don't believe in experiments experiments of these people. reference to going back away from that away from that prison <clears throat> I'm thinking about our ancient teachings and the songs that goes behind it reminds me of the time the days when we had no prisons we had no jails. We didn't need no psychiatrists. We were a happy people. We were able to live in paradise as the way we wanted it. And they're making our paradise become a hell for us. So I feel that if anyone has, if there is such a thing as hell, I feel that we're going through it at this time. trapped in this. That's just a personal feeling, a reflection of mine that I have. <clears throat> of hate, and prejudice, and disrespect, and wars, and killing, abuses. And just to number a few. I back away from the prison sometimes. I don't want to quit no more. I don't want no more. But yet, if I do, who is going to do it? You know? There is no other medicine man's going to do it for me. I know that. Because I have asked for their help. But each one is manipulated by the U.S. government. When they do try it, they manipulate it. They make them do things. <clears throat> other than praying. It reminds me of the time when our songs, and the ancient songs that we sing that dates back from time and memorial hundreds and thousands of years ago. How these ancient songs were sung How it re in reference to a vision quest on a mountain, a person receives a song 
an ancient song 